Up there. <laughs> <laughs> there's the boys there. You want to get a picture, you taking pictures. Right. The boys are not here. Yeah. And then we're at Greenfield Village here uh, in November 15, 1980. <laughs> Some people. We're in the Bunko Village. And Let it go a little ways because when you stop and start it, it's gonna. Thank 
with, Robbie. What? This is what they used to cook with. What's that? What? What's that? What? Rolls over the ground, huh? Michael at the museum.
Um, do you see this uh, receiver over here? Oh, yes. Look at this one over here, though. It's Armstrong. It's 1922. That's when we were born. That's a super heterodyne receiver. There's a speaker that came out of a suitcase. Very crazy. Yeah. Things to take, Greg. I know. Some of the stuff is unbelievable. You look back at it. Did you, did you see all those back? We haven't been to the bathtubs yet. No. It's in the next room. I was looking over Edison's frequency uh, receiver. He could receive various tones, and it was made up of reeds and coils. Yeah. Huh. Receive tones. Tones, various tones. After the telegraph, he was working on receiving uh, actual tones. In other words, he had re relays vibrating over the top of these coils, which received only that particular frequency. I know. There's so many 
you my shoes. I saw a big three phase one over there. battery radio receiver. The music box is two on back there. The detector and one stage of audio amplifier. Two battery operated receiver. Hmm. Yeah. And water can. Model ten. Was 15750 with tubes. Uh, and over here, we find that. Uh, what I was looking for. Where did you find that? Well, there were ten areas. It was in the Hound Park plant. Mm -hmm. You should see that. That's something. Was it in what plant? Huh? In the Highland Park Ford plant. It was there when I was there in 1980. Was that right? Oh, Jesus. That's huge. They had six of them in there. and they. Right in front of the plant, there's all in big thick glass windows right in front of them wooded there. Uh -huh. Six in big units. It was immaculate in there. They're all tile, white tile, and people you know, always walking and uh -huh. wiping and cleaning and just shine in there. It was it's back here now. It's yeah, back in. One of them here. Okay. We'll take a look at it. It's an old telephone. You can take a picture of Brian. It's an old telephone. Okay. <coughs> oh, no. She got to come up. There's just one go up. Where is Brian? Yeah, over here. You're going to have to... Who's this guy? Yeah, you got to you get to the steps. Well, no, Michael, you can't come through here. <laughs> we got to finish seeing these right here. Yeah, I remember that. And then, during World War I... Uh, these are uh, you know, big cameras. Folding Kodak like this. One? With a little mark that got yeah. similar to that. Huh. They still haven't got oh there's one, the pan panorama Kodak. Uh, is this called the folding Kodak? Yeah, but there's that. 
Very similar to the one that I have. I think I've got the prototype model. It says number 10 on it. Serial number 10. 10 on that one? Uh-huh. Let's see, that's our... Uh, there's the picture. We produced in 1997. This camera had a scope of 142 degrees, producing pictures 3.5 by 12 inches. Can you believe this? Almost a crack loop in my layer. Yeah, let's see. Kind of hard to. There. And I'm getting a view of it. Get up here to get Brian. Inside of that tube? I don't know. I think that's where you can talk to me. That's probably what it is. A, a sound phone. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Craig, can you hear me down there at the end of this tube? Hey, Craig. Yeah. See you. Uh, can you see me? I can see you. <laughs> can you see me? I'll back up. Okay, More I light on my face. I can see you. Okay. <laughs> Quite a hollow sound, isn't it? It sure is. Okay. I'm going to zoom in on you here. All right. Zoom in on me while I talk. There. I bet that really makes a funny sound in that microphone. Yeah, is the microphone extended now? No. Here, there we go. There we go. Okay. This is a test to a long tube. Yeah. Oh, we got a signal light there. Pass the Navy girl. Do an SOS, Dad, on that. Show them how it works. There's some airplanes coming now, Pat. That's, a, that's an awkward SOS. Can you see this one? Does this one go too? printing presses in here and now we've got some old typewriters here some old Remingtons there's an old Royal over there where is the Royal? the Royal is right over here in fact I just sold this one right here for $25 the other day one just like that one just like I used to have yeah I sold that for $25 Edison mimeograph. Yeah, there's an old safe.
Daddy? Uh-huh. Let's go over here and see the, all the planes. Some old bicycles, huh? Yeah, those are airplanes. Early coherers of crystal detectors. Yeah. Now, this is something that was in the very beginning, wasn't used very long. Huh. I want to see those radios and TVs over here. There. What's this thing here? Okay. Small radios here, wireless receiver. That's a federal telephone and telegraph. Think of all these, Brian. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go over there by the plane. I most of these early vacuum tubes. I've got one like that. Yeah. Plus, first all of the one miniature. Yeah. Let's go over here by the plane. Let's go over here by the plane. Okay. We'll. Loop over there, Brian, as soon as we get down to the end of this. Cunningham tubes. You know what that is? Of course, receivers. Is that what that is? Oh. Very young. Sure have a lot of stuff here. Put it on uh, fluorescent lighting here. Glenn wanted me to see the SX-28 receiver. This is the one Glenn has at home. Here's one of those guy at the Adams. Short wave sets. Look at all those shiny cans on there. 
marble silver he's made out of. It's got it. Yeah. Knobs. The coils are the hard time for the cans and all the tubes in there. Huh. Those are the shields for the tubes. See the IF Panther Square? RF. New Super Spray Raider by South Panthers. That you needed to, just to get a picture. Oh my goodness! Look at that. Floodlights. You take a picture of the people. Remember Charles up there? And that receiver. Remember seeing that? Oh yeah. The top one. Oh yeah. Yeah. You got that? What is that one called? That's the RCA. Radiola. Huh. Model 28, VR 969. I even have a S meter that plugs into that little connector. I don't know if we can read this. Brian, please don't move it. Then take a picture of it. I got that. I got that about 10 minutes ago. You 
That's a pretty yellow one, isn't it? fluorescent lighting compensation now. I'll put it on outside sunlight compensation there. That's where it is now. Let's see which one is the most true. That's kind of a chartreuse, a yellow green car. Yellowish green car. Some real old ones down here now. We got a uh, truck of some kind here. Lincoln camping truck. I think we should buy a trailer like that. That's an old trailer, isn't it? Think so? We're getting down in the old car section now. Forty-four GP Pygmy. That's a standard oil truck. Kerosene. There's somebody we know. Interesting. Oh, they are. Some really old ones on this side. Where should we go from here? Over to see the trains, the steam trains. engines. Okay. I bet you, you could ride that bicycle. Yeah. I bet you could ride Michael that. Michael could? One. I don't know. No. Maybe somebody could. Looks like it's kind of well, you'd have to have a lot of film to. Click off all these pictures. Here we go. Pain there. All the pain. Well, they got yeah. enough cars too. Ran out 
basically their pain is twice the amount of pain. We gotta wow. go, we gotta go down that aisle, I think, to get in the train. We're going up to see the train. Go on up, Robbie, with Brian. They said they're gonna go over this way.
news for you guys. The Brahman. The Brahman. A tiny carriage owned by a general of Tom Thumb and his tiny wife. Tom Thumb and his wife lived in there. steam engine that they had many years ago. Okay, Pat's going to stand there for comparison and then we're going to look up at the top of it here. And there's the front of it. And then it goes down here. That long. Is your eye better already? Yeah.
Benson was unable to take over, the second son, he also became involved with war service. So who would go back into harness? Henry Ford himself. At age 80, there he was, resuming the post of president, supervising the production of bombers. I spent some time with him at Willow Run when he was doing this. When army officials came on inspection tours, there he was, the official greeter and guide around that vast Willow Run plant. The war over, Henry Ford uh, decided to retire, or at least halfway. Time for another story about the legend. Remember the signing of the contract during the Model T or Model A days with Ford stipulating that clutches were to be shipped to his plants in wooden boxes of a certain size and thickness and with screw holes placed at specified places so that upon removing the contents, the box lids and bottoms were to be fitted right into a car as the floorboard. His idea was to have nothing go to waste. That was Henry Ford. At long last, there was time for leisure, and he invited Mrs. Ford to join him in a ride that began after nightfall in 1893. There it is, the old quadricycle, tuned up, ready to gallop off to the show, as spry as it was when Henry Ford crossed his fingers, hoping, hoping that it might live up to his expectations. By age 83, he had seen that early machine revolutionize travel all over this planet and pile up a vast fortune for him. A year later, 1947, spring storms turned the River Rouge into a raging torrent, flooding the Ford estate, and Henry himself went out to assess the damage, and that effort proved a bit too much. He returned to the mansion and passed away. As for the King of Oil, he managed to live to a ripe old age. He had hoped to see 100, but his final year was 98. Thirteen years ago, he celebrated his 84th birthday by giving away nickels. Baby thinks he wants it back. The richest man in the world. With his son, John D. Jr., he gave away $700 million. The world's greatest philanthropist. Friend of Will Rogers, the homespun philosopher. For Rockefeller had a homespun beginning. A peddler's son who became a bookkeeper and then an oil pioneer. Here, he's 90. His great age was a phenomenon. His birthdays were events for the news. His ambition, to live to be a hundred. Two towering giants of industry, lives that will long be remembered because of the influence they had on all mankind. John D. Rockefeller, 1839 to 1937, Henry Ford, 1863 to 1947. And until we meet again, this is Lowell Thomas saying, so long until tomorrow. Almighty frosty mood, otherwise I couldn't paint the winter. You know, it's hard to paint the winter in California, in sunny California. <laughs> but we will paint an almighty winter. The magic white is on the canvas. <clears throat> the magic white is already on the canvas, like this. Make sure you have it nice and even. And this time I will make always sure you're Almighty big brush is always clean and dry, like that. I will use Almighty fan brush, winter colors. They are warm and cold colors. We never talked about that. Uh, what is a cold color? Uh, as a sample, how about we take a look on the, on the palette? It would be wonderful to, maybe there. See, I have, you remember the old routine again? White, yellow, red, alizarin, crimson, blue, Van Dyke Brown and the green here. If you could organize your palette something in this direction, you would be very healthy this way. But summer colors, I would say the summer colors is the upper half, the winter colors is the lower half. See, uh, red and cad, all the cad yellows, cad red, and uh, that's all warm, very warm colors. And uh, the alizarin crimson and blue and uh, the dirt, I call it dirt, Van Dyke Brown is kind of a dirt color. Um, you add it sometime to darken it down. You don't have to. Blue does the same job, actually. Uh, they are the colder colors. So you can put uh, a sky with, with cad reds and, 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 and whites and blues together, and I can do it with alizarin crimson and blue, and it will look cold. Okay, 
I'm ready for the frost. I will use a mighty fan brush and I take the paint off like this. The white, thank again. The white is on the canvas and I will make a little test first again. Is that the color I want? I want maybe, maybe a little bit more on the reddish tune. See, then I go just and pick up uh, a bit of uh, Alison Crimson into that and try it again. Yeah, that, that's just what I want, fine. So make our sure that's the color you want to put on. Okay, now I want to make a winter sky, freezing sky, shivering, and I fire in again. You have clouds, you have clean spots. But the, see, uh, it depends on how you press. I press harder, I get more, more, more action. I, I go very light, I have a lighter color. It's the, think about the brush is always loaded right on the inside. And when you have it like that, then you can get the inside out and you can just have shallow the top of the hair. This is a thing you will practice and you will gain when you learn that. Because I can always have it very, very light. You act like a band conductor. You want it loud, fire in, fire in. You want it very light, very light. Show down, 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 down. Okay, that's the way you paint. I paint always. I, I want it very light, very light, very light. Oh, fire, fire, fire. Oh, I want it very light, very light, very light. All oh, the mighty cloud is moving by again. Moving by again. And I want it light, 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 around there, light, around there, around there. Uh, and if you get that in your bloodstream, you know, you laugh about yourself and you see the almighty resource is coming, is gone, is coming, is gone, is changing. And that makes you, makes you alive on your own, you are alive on your own canvas. And when the painting is finished, that painting is alive. It is not dead. It is not uh, just there, you noodled around and you are scared. And you are not scared. You are just, this is almighty painting. It's you. You are the almighty creator. And when you put that brush on, you hear that dun in the sky and you hear that rumbling in the valleys and, and it was you. And when you're finished, then you step back off your camera and say, it was me what painted that painting. Talk like that to yourself. I just wish I get you into that almighty swing. And when you're in, no one can get you out of that. That's, it's like a drug, you get hocked. <laughs> Maybe I hock you. Okay. Okay, I use my almighty fan brush now and then uh, I hypnotize the whole thing. See how it looks, always from the light into the dark. They hypnotize it, hypnotize And have the feeling of, you are hypnotizing it. I am hypnotizing it. And I am in, in such almighty power of that canvas. That canvas is scared about me. Oh, that canvas is scared about me. I feel sorry for my canvas. <clears throat> I feel sorry for you, poor little canvas. No. Okay, all right, all right. I would say that's, that's the sky I wants to see there. But then you can pronounce your clouds, you can puff them up. And next time around, if I will paint a cloud puffing up again. This is just a muddy winter color. Okay, see the sky is finished already. Now let's add a happy little mountain into that. Again, I use white. We'll take a look on my palette again. Put it right over here. And there's almighty hair in my paint. You don't like that? Okay. And use fresh blue into that. A little crimson. The same colors you have in the sky should be in the mountain. Okay, watch the, the movement, see? Looks good, it's appetizing. You would like to eat it. And when you like it, then it will look good on the canvas. I, I like it a little bit darker. Okay, I add the same two colors back again and go over again. And don't go further than that. That's the, maybe I should go darker, but not more moving. Don't move the paint. You know, by moving the paint, does your paint get thinner? Do you know that too? You, it's the same like putty. You have putty, you buy putty, and you knit your putty. You, you work it through and it becomes thinner and thinner and softer. And the same happened with your paint. You wonder sometimes, you buy a solid, strong paint, but by working it and working it and nagging it and nagging it, you get it <laughs> thinner and thinner and thinner. And finally you wonder, what the devil? I bought a thick paint and here I have a thin paint. Think about that. It's a good thing to know. 
Okay, see? Then don't make it too much. Okay, that is enough. I will power in a part of a mountain there. Hold your knife very flat. Do hold your knife. Do hold it very, very flat. Eh? And have the peaks, whatever you want to paint. Every mountain has a different shape. Think about the, the, the Tetons. The mountains are leaning on each other. Then you know the Mount Rainier or Mount Shasta. They all have a certain character. You don't have to have it dead on. As long as you can say that resembles Mount 